Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do click subscribe if you haven't done so yet. That will be lovely. Today, guys, I've got a bit of a treat for my Dan Electro U256 reissue here. I bought this guitar on eBay a couple of months ago, and I made the demo video of it pretty much as soon as it arrived in the mail. It turned up, I put my thick strings on it, and made that video. And I think I might have got a little bit overexcited in that video, because this guitar was unlike anything else I'd ever played, and I was loving how it sounded, and I still do. But as time's gone on and I've really got to know this instrument, there's been a few things about it that have been annoying me. So the pickups sound okay, but they're not special. They don't feel really nice to play. They sound all right, but that's about as far as it goes. The wiring inside the guitar is done using that very cheap plastic coated wire, which has never really sounded that great in my opinion. And the biggest problem I've had is the bridge. Two things I don't like about that. One, it's suspended off the body of the guitar on two little screws. I always like things to be bolted down really hard because it generally stays in tune better and I don't feel like it's going to explode in a shower of nuts and springs if I hit the guitar hard. And also you can't intonate it. It's just a block of wood, a bit like an acoustic guitar bridge. The intonation is, it's not horrendous, but it's not great either. It might be all right with a set of 10s on it, but I use 12 through 60, so big heavy strings, and it's off just enough to really be grating on me. So I thought it would be an interesting idea to upgrade everything in this guitar, completely gut it, and put in completely new electronics and hardware. So I've been online and I found some replacement dual concentric pots which have 100k on the top for the tone and 1 meg on the bottom for the volume, a new switch, a new jack plug, some nice wax coated vintage style wire and some new old stock Russian paper in oil capacitors to the same values as the originals would have been in the 50s. For the bridge I've got hold of this here which is an intonatable Dan Electro bridge. It's completely symmetrical so it doesn't matter that I'm left-handed, I've just swapped the saddles over. The spacing is a little bit squiffy because the high strings are slightly narrower than the lower strings but I don't mind about that because it's going to solve the intonation problem. And in terms of it floating on the screws I've made this little two-tier wooden chock here and I've lacquered the outside of it and polished it up because that's the only bit you'll see so don't worry about the fact it looks a bit tacky on the top because that will be covered up by the bridge. So I'm hoping this can sit underneath the bridge and bolt down really hard onto the guitar and hopefully that will improve the sustain and maybe the tuning and just feel a lot better to play. Which left one problem, the pickups. Now as you might imagine these lipstick pickups, they're, they're not the most popular pickups in the world and I generally prefer British made hand wound boutique pickups. For me they always sound and feel better. 80% of it's probably in my head, but that's generally what I go for. And not many people make vintage correct replicas of the old lipsticks. So I shopped around and it quickly became apparent that even back in the 50s, Dan Electro guitars were built to be affordable. They weren't Gibson Les Pauls or Fender Tellys or anything like that. They were kind of the budget guitar of the day. They were kind of the Squire Strat of the 50s, really. So not many people make replica pickups of these old style lipsticks. So I've been shopping around and I eventually settled on these, which are made by Curtis Novak over in the States, and I think in California. And these are vintage correct, hand wound, proper, boutique, really, really great pickups. So today I'm going to upgrade everything on this guitar, the bridge, the pickups, the electrics. The only thing I'm not gonna touch are the tuning pegs because a, they're kind of bespoke fittings for Dan Electro, and B, they stay in perfect tune. So there's no reason to change those at all. So I'm going to do the usual before and after thing, shoot some footage through a few different pedals, change out everything, and then shoot the same things so we can see how much better, or worse, these changes make to this guitar. So without further ado, let's get going. <laughs>
all of those changes have had an absolutely colossal effect on the sound of this guitar. It's so much more weighty now and feels so much more alive to play. It makes the original configuration seem like a toy. To be honest, a lot of the thicker and louder sound is coming from these pickups, not just because they're miles better than what was in there before, but they are slightly higher output. They used to be 3.8 and 3.6, they're now 6.2 and 5.8, so that is going to be responsible for a little bit of the beef, but by no means all. And I'm also loving how this guitar feels to play now. I think a lot of it has to do with bolting the bridge hard down onto the body. The original two-tier chock that I made was much too high, so it's now a single tier. But even unplugged... The whole thing can fizzes and vibrates and it feels so much more alive. I'm absolutely loving that and this bridge has made it so I can intonate it so much better. So I think this guitar sounds so much more of what I was wanting it to sound originally now, but please do comment underneath this video, let me know what you think, whether you preferred it before or after and why, I do love reading your comments. And yeah, thank you for watching guys, I hope that was interesting for you. Please do hit the subscribe icon because that really does help. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye bye!